One of the things I find most tedious about scientific writing is entering numbers into text. I don't trust myself. I know that I'm likely to transpose numbers, goof things up, use calculations that I didn't really mean to use. Well, in today's episode of Code Club, I'm going to show you a way to avoid that using inline code in an R Markdown document. Hey friends, I'm Pat Schloss, and this is Code Club. In each episode of Code Club, I try to apply principles of reproducible research to an interesting biological question. Over the past 50 or so episodes, I've been trying to investigate the sensitivity and specificity of amplicon sequence variants, also called ASVs, and operational taxonomic units, also called OTUs. Well, uh, we're at the point where we're writing our manuscript, right? And if you've watched over the past few episodes, we've seen that we've expanded from a rough draft, uh, from an outline into a rough draft. And as I write, I don't insert numbers and I don't insert specifics because I find that going and finding those values really slows me down. Well, today we're ready to start inserting those specifics. And we're going to show you how you can use R code in an R markdown document to insert literal calculations into the text so that when you see a number, you know that you haven't transposed a number or screwed something up. Also, it provides a level of transparency so somebody can come back later and say, hey, Pat had this number of 23,000.56. <laughs> Where did that number come from? And you can take that number all the way back to a raw data file. Sound exciting? <laughs> well, I know it's not that exciting to everyone, but for me, it's been huge for revolutionizing how my lab does its research and reports our values because I feel like it makes it so much more reproducible. So we're gonna dig into this draft we've been working on and I'll show you how we can insert inline R code into the manuscript to populate these values. So we're gonna go ahead into our project root directory uh, as we've done so many times in the past. Uh, I'll go ahead and open up my R project file in R studio. This will pop us into our current working directory. Uh, if I go to my files, um, I'm gonna to go to my submission and then uh, manuscript.rmd file. Uh, so we are kind of where we left off uh, after the past two episodes. Again, I've got my code, my text here. Um, you'll see that in here, I've got some X's for what are, I wanna plug in specific values. Um, and so this all looks good, like we remember it. Uh, we might not get through all of the text today. Also, sometimes what happens is I start looking at the text and looking at my analysis and realizing I don't actually have the data <laughs> that I thought I had for the manuscript. So we might run into that uh, either in this episode or the next episode, but we'll get it squared away. And so what I'm gonna do is at the top of this document, I'm gonna create uh, an R chunk. And we've seen this before when we talked about making those exploratory data files. Uh, and that's with the three back ticks and set of curly braces. And we close out a R chunk with uh, three back ticks. Uh, and inside the curly braces, we put R, right? So in here, I'm going to put library tidyverse, library knitter, and library here. I uh, remember that library here, uh, the here library helps R to know where we are, or R studio to, or sorry, R markdown to know where we are. Um, and we saw that previously in our um, in our exploratory data analysis. So I like to put my code chunk that I'm generating the values out of close to the paragraph where I'm gonna use those values. Um, so I'll go ahead and create another code chunk down here. And um, I'm gonna need to read in my metadata and my ASV data and then join those together. I've already done that a few times in the exploratory data analysis. So I'm gonna actually go to my exploratory. And I think I had that a good one down here. Um, kind of when we were doing the lumping and splitting. Yeah, so this looks good. I'm going to go ahead and copy this back to my manuscript RMD and give it the once over to make sure everything looks good. Um, for now, I'm not going to worry about only selecting one genome per species. And actually, I'm going to get rid of that, as well as that final pipe, we might come back and revisit that later. So EASV and then metadata ESV, we're going to join those all together. And if I run these, um, let's see, could not find function read TSV. And that's because although I put it up here, I didn't actually run these library commands. Okay, so those all look good. And then if we come back down now, I can run these. And that's 
going well. Um, and let's see, I want it in the console, not inline. Uh, I'll remove that output. Okay, so again, the first question is, how many genomes are represented in the RNDB, right? And so what I can do is that we have metadata, and as you'll recall, metadata um, is has a row for each of the genomes in the data set, and there's like 15,614 genomes, right? So we need R to tell our text that, or to insert that into our text. So what I can do um, is that I can replace that series of XXXs and I can put in two backticks, and inside the backticks, I put an R space, and then I can do n row metadata. Okay, and so what that'll pop in is 15,614 into that slot. Okay, so to show you what that looks like, um, I'm, I could knit it um, here, and yeah, let's go ahead and knit it. That's fine. This will generate a PDF version of the document. Uh, it takes a moment. Um, but it goes pretty quick. And this is outputting it as a Word document for some reason. That's fine for now. We'll get that figured out. Um, you'll see my code chunk here, which I don't really want. But looky here, we've got 15,614. Looks good, right? So that's effectively what we want. So to get rid of outputting uh, my code, I can tell our, um, our markdown to, to not echo my code. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that document. Um, I will also look at my output here. Um, and I'm gonna, yeah, that's right. So I did both Word document default and PDF keep text true. Okay, that's fine. Um, so what I can do is at the top of my um, code chunk, I can say echo equals false, and that will keep R markdown from outputting uh, the code. Okay, so that's good. And um, and again, we've got our first bit of information inserted into our text, which is awesome. So the next thing we wanna know um, is each genome had between some number, which is probably one, and some other number, copies of the RN operon. Um, I think what I wanna, as we do this also, we realize that Maybe we want to put in, uh, we want to word things differently or we want to calculate different values. So one thing that I want to put in here um, is perhaps the number of species. And so perhaps I could say um, among the, um, you know, XXX uh, species represented in the RNDB, there were however many genomes. And then I can say period, each genome had blah, 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 blah. Okay, species. Uh, and so I need, to, I need to plug that number in here as well. And so I can get that by doing, again, um, backticks, R space, and then I can say um, N distinct, and that will then count the distinct number of species in metadata. So I can do metadata, dollar sign species. Uh, that dollar sign is a way to get a column out of metadata. And I'm gonna go ahead and change things a little bit and do make uh, submission manuscript.pdf. Um, this will run it through the terminal uh, using our make. Uh, and doing it this way, it'll render, as you recall, both the Word version and the PDF version. And so I can do open submission manuscript.pdf. Um, and we see there's a little bit of output up here that I probably want to turn off. Uh, but again, if I scroll down, I see that I have 4,774 species represented. There were 15,614 genomes. Awesome, right? So if we get a new version of the RNDB, we run rerun everything, it will update those numbers for us. I don't have to worry about, did I, did I update the numbers or not? It's going to be automatically generated from our upstream data. The other thing to notice, again, is that that code chunk is missing up here. So I also want to turn off the output, um, the echo, in uh, this top of uh, this top code chunk, right? So I can say echo equals false. I'll run that. And again, if I uh, not open it, but remake it, um, then it will hopefully get rid of those library uh, function calls in the top code chunk. 
And again, that goes pretty quickly. And I see that that's gone now, right? And you would never know that there was R code baked into this document. It's so awesome. Okay. Now let's scroll back down and find the next thing that we need to take care of in our text. Um, and so that is each genome had between X and XX copies of the R and operon. Um, and so we need to figure out what is that range and then what are the names of those organisms. So what we can do is I'm going to take metadata EASV and we will pipe it. And so I'm going to work this up kind of like I would if I was working in an R script and trying to do uh, some type of analysis. So then I will do filter uh, region equals equals V19, threshold equals equals zero. Uh, this will give me the full length sequences and that threshold. And I want to know the number of copies in each genome and then kind of the, the median uh, for each species. Um, we could use the range, um, but um, I don't know. I think I'd rather use the median because sometimes there might be outliers that aren't indicative of that species. I don't know. Uh, let's see what happens if we do the median instead. Um, or maybe we could, maybe we could do the mode. Um, let's let's start with the median. R actually doesn't have a mode function, so you might think about why doesn't R have a mode function? Uh, but we'll save that for another time. All right. So again, what this is going to look like um, is that we've got our genome ID, um, our species, and then we've got region, threshold, and um, oh, we've got our count up here and our EASV up there. And we want to know the number of copies per genome by species. So we will then do group by um, species, genome ID, and we will then we want to count the number of copies um, uh, to, to the number of RN copies, right? So we'll do summarize n RN equals um, yeah sum uh, sum on count. And again, if we run that we see that we've got the species, the genome ID, and the count. Uh, we can also then do that dot groups equals drop. And then I can do group by uh, species. And I'm going to output uh, ranges. So I will do summarize uh, min um, copy number equals min um, nrn max copy number and then let's do median copy no equals median man those typos are coming fast and furious and then i'm going to put in an n column to know the total number of genomes uh, for that um, uh, for that species and then we can do summarize uh, groups, sorry, groups equals drop. And it looks like I added an extra parentheses up here. All right, so if we run that, for each species then, we get the minimum copy number, the max copy number, the median copy number, and the N. Um, and that is good. Maybe I'll get rid of these copy no things because uh, it's going to be obvious that this is a data frame of copy numbers. So again, that makes it a little bit easier to look at. And um, we would like to look at the min and the max. So I'm going to call this uh, copy number. Uh, our end copy number. Uh, we'll run this to generate the data frame. And then um, this is RRN copy number. And I want the minimum, right? And so I'm going to do. Um, top n, and maybe I'll do minus 1 uh, for my n. So that'll give me the smallest by the median column. Um, and that gives me a bunch of things, of course. So maybe what I will do will be to do filter median equals 1, and then pipe that out to give me the one with the most genomes in it. Um, oh, I've got an extra sign there. And so we see that mycobacterium tuberculosis has one copy, 
180 genomes. Every genome has one copy. Um, and that's, I, I, that's a good example to use because it's the most, um, most sequenced species um, that only has one copy of the 6 gen gene in it. And so we'll call this um, uh, single copy. Okay. And then let's find the, the max copy, which uh, I think I'll do kind of the same idea, but maybe um, maybe this will work. Um, what we did try to do before, where I do median. So let's see, what's this equal? So this is Metabacillus literalis, uh, has 19 copies in it. Um, and so that that looks good. Um, and then let's use another example, or that's that's the range, right? So single copy, max copy. So what I'd like to do then is to put single copy down in here. Um, so this would be like um, our single copy and then um, what? That we want the, the species name and maybe I'll put dollar sign species or uh, no, that's the range, right? So this is what goes in here. And this then would be median, I think, yep. And then down here, we'll put the same thing, except instead of single copy, we're gonna want max copy, right? Max copy dollar sign species. Let's give that a shot and see what we get. So while this is running, a good reminder to be sure that you've liked the video and subscribed to it so you can see the rest of how this manuscript plays out. Uh, let's look at our document here. And if I zoom in, so we see that each genome had between one, e.g. Mycobacterium tuberculosis, and 19, Metabacillus listeralis, copies of the RN operon. Um, and so maybe I should say that each, each species had between um, let's see, let's say each species had between, um, or the middle, the median number of RN operons per species ranged between So that kind of reflects a little bit better what we're actually calculating, right? All right. So next, on average, there were so many variants per copy of the full length um, 6 s gene and an average of blah, 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 when considering all these other regions, right? So what we want to do um, is uh, come back up here. And now what we're going to look at is our, um, let's see our metadata EASV, and we want to look at, um, not by genome or not by species, we want to look across all genomes um, at the um, number of, by genome, we're going to do the number of ASVs divided by, or and the number of copies, and then we're going to add that across all of the genomes within each region. So um, again, we're going to do filter, threshold equals equals zero. And again, we're doing that because we're still focusing on um, like kind of the true uh, pure Amplicon sequence variant without any clustering, um, kind of an exact sequence variance, if you will. And we will then do group by uh, region and um, genome ID. And we can do summarize. And we will then do um, Let's see, N RNs, N ASVs. So our number of RNs is going to be uh, sum on count. N ASVs will be N distinct um, EASV. And we can then do dot groups equals drop. Give that a run. And so we should then get for each region, each genome, the number of copies and the number of ASVs. So this first one had nine copies of the 6 chance gene and nine different variants. 
All right, so now we're going to go ahead and group this, not that direction, yep, um, by region. And we want to do a summarize. Uh, I'm going to call it rate. And we'll do n ASVs. Uh, I need sum n ASVs divided by sum n RNs. And we'll again do dot groups equals drop. Give that a run. And this should give us our four different regions. Excellent. So um, I'm going to call this rates. And I will then say, um, let's, let's make a V19 rate, a V34 rate, V4 rate, and V45 rate. Um, and I'd rather do that up here in the code trunk rather than down in the text, because all that you know, long, long lines of code uh, really gets hard to edit um, when you're trying to check your code and, and makes it hard to read the R markdown, harder. It's, it's already going to be hard with this code, but it's going to make it a lot harder with that information baked in there. So if we do rates. Um, filter um, uh, region equals equals v19 and then you could do uh, pull rate and what this then because uh, I forgot to load that get that then we get 0.597 okay um, and again the pull gives you a vector output rather than if we use select you get a tibble back right uh, and so I'm going to do a poll to get the actual value. And I'm going to then put in v4, 3, 4, 4, 5. And I'm going to call this rate v19. v4. I think my hands are cold. I'm more, far more typos than normal. Um, All right, so now I've got these values and I can come back down here and I can then say um, back tick and put an R rate V19, right? Um, and, and then I can plop that in here and I can say V4, three, four, and four, five, uh, and then I probably should put respectively at the end of that sentence. Okay, so let's run that and see what things look like. So the more code you put into your Markdown document, the longer it's going to take to run, um, but um, but that's still pretty quick. So one thing we notice is that we got the numbers in here, right? Uh, the downside is that we've got like tons of significant digits. So we'll come back later and talk about how we can clean up those significant digits to maybe just output like 0.59 or 0 0.597, 0 0.25, you know, and so forth. Because um, so many significant digits really isn't necessary. So we'll hold on to that and we'll come back to that later. Down here now, we want to know, uh, so we're talking about how right here, as you increase the number of 16S genes in the um, the data set in a genome, the number of variants also increases. So for example, M. tuberculosis generally only had one copy of the gene per genome, but across the XXX genomes that have been sequenced, there were however many. And similarly, E. coli um, had those as well. And I might also want to put that put in that uh, literalis, uh, parabacillus, or whatever it was in there as well, to illustrate for a small uh, number of copies, a medium number of copies, and then a large number of RN operon copy numbers, how many variants were there? Okay, and so we're going to need to know uh, the number of genomes, as well as the number of variants of ASV. And so we kind of already have the variants, or um, the number of um, copies from up here, right? Uh, and so maybe I'll save that here. Uh, and if we look at that value, then we've got our species name in the left axis, or left column. So I could do filter um, species, uh, what, equals, equals, um, and I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to be good. Um, I wonder why I didn't like that. Uh, so mycobacterium tuberculosis. So I'll do a single copy 
dollar sign uh, species. Why aren't you happy? Oh, because I can't spell. Ah. <laughs> All right, so mycobacterium tuberculosis. And then what I want a pull is the N, right? So that's the number. Uh, so single copy N is that. Um, I'm going to leave that all as one line. Uh, we'll also do then max copy uh, N. And I don't think I need that really in here uh, because it's, it's only one, I'm pretty sure. That's one. Um, and then I'd like to also get out E. coli. Uh, so we'll do that. So E. coli copy N is that. And then we'll do species equals and then E. coli copy N 958. Okay, so I'm going to come back down and we'll do single copy N. Let's do um, let's do single copy, single copy dollar sign species. Uh, and again, I need that backtick R, right? I'll only one copy of the genome per genome. Um, let's see, and we can pop that in here and we can do um, median, right? Single copy median is one. Um, but across the, um, and then we had, I've already forgotten the name, single copy N. Let's see, arc, single copy N. Um, there, there were however many variants of the gene. And So that's how many genomes there were, but we haven't figured out the number of variants there are. Okay, so we still need to generate that. Um, where were you? So we need to figure that out still, right? Um, so an E. coli had, uh, let's do R E. coli uh, copy N, and I suspect I didn't define that up about oh, 958 um, between uh, one and one. Uh, so I will then say, um, yeah, we had this up. R, um, e. coli copy, uh, median. Uh, I don't know that I defined that, so we'll ha be sure to do that. And, um, R E coli copy dollar sign max. I think I meant min here. Um, and then across the um, R uh, E coli copy N uh, E coli genomes that have been sequenced. There are however many variants of the gene. Okay. Um, and I think, I, again, I need to define E. coli copy up here. Um, and what's, we're going to do um, RN copy number. I already did that. Um, so what's E. coli copy N? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do E. coli copy, and let's leave out the poll N for now. Uh, and so if I look at E. coli copy, that's going to give me my min, meet, max, median, and N. Um, and did I screw something up there? No. Okay. I just forgot to delete that extra thing. All right. So E. coli copy. Uh, I'm going to come down and do E. coli copy min, E. coli copy max, and then E. coli copy dollar sign n. Let's save that. And we can then build that up. Ah. 
I must have left E. coli copy N in here somewhere. Uh, so similarly, an E. coli typically had E. coli copy dollar sign median. Run that. Hopefully we don't get any errors this time. And again, we look at, um, we see that we've got the numbers populated in here uh, across the 958 E. coli genomes, however many variants. Um, and maybe I'll add a sentence that um, the uh, max copy dollar sign species um, genome had, um, let's see, Had however many, so this is going to be max copy, right? Of the gene per genome, but across, um, but had, or I'll say and had versions of the gene in its genome sequence. Great. So now all we need to get are the number of versions. So uh, I know this is going a little bit long, but hang with me. We've got this one last bit to fill in. Uh, clearly, we're not going to get to the second paragraph today. That's fine. Uh, so what we need to get is the number of ASVs by species. And again, we'll take our metadata ASV um, and uh, we want the total number of ASVs for that species. So we'll do that, and then we'll do um, group by species, and then summarize um, n ASVs equals sum count, right? And um, and so we'll say ASVs per species. We can then do our dot groups equals drop. And if we do ASVs per species, uh, you know what, I want uh, V19. So I'm also going to do add region equals equals V19. And if I do ASVs per species, and then I do filter, um, let's do species equals equals Escherichia coli. I've got 6,713 ASVs. Uh, I didn't want some count. I wanted uh, n distinct um, ESV, and that gives me 1,013. Um, yeah, ASVs, uh, and so this is going to be E. coli is that, uh, and I'll do a pull. And ASVs. Um, great. Uh, and then we also want uh, the single as well as the max copy. So I'm going to borrow that code and come down here. So it's E. coli and ASVs, max and ASVs, um, and Again, I'm kind of reusing the code that I've already got, and I'll pull NASVs on all these. Uh, and so if I look at the single, uh, there's 11 copies among those 180 mycobacterium genomes, and then max NASVs uh, has 17 copies in those 19 um, versions. Um, and you know, the more I think about it, I don't know that I really want that max sentence that I added, because the thing about the mycobacterium and the E. coli is there's a lot of cop, there's a lot of genomes that we have in the database, so I think I'm going to leave that out. Um, yeah, the more I think about it, I think I'm going to remove that. And what I can do then is I can put uh, backslash r, 
and this was then single copy, um, I'm sorry, single N ASVs. And then this will also be, um, uh, let's see, this was E. coli uh, N ASVs. And yeah, I think I forgot to, once I've defined it, I forgot to uh, run the line up here. And let's just double check that those look good, 1013. And then uh, the one for my microbacterium is 11. Okay, so I'll go ahead, build this, should look good. I'm kind of rushing through doing this first paragraph. Again, what I really like about this is this gives me the confidence that um, I'm not introducing typographical errors when I introduce uh, the specific numbers um, into my manuscript that I have R do it for me. Um, and I see that I've got, um, you know, 1013 here, 11 there. Very good. Um, and that was one paragraph that we went through today to populate the values. Um, sometimes I get manuscripts to review from people that are using an R markdown document and they've hard coded these numbers into the text. That totally defeats the purpose of having an R markdown document. Remember, the value of an R markdown document is that you can have the markdown, but you can insert your R code in there to update it for you. So if between now and when the manuscript is finally accepted, we hope, <laughs> um, the RNDB updates the database, I don't really have to touch the manuscript except to make sure that my conclusions haven't changed because any of the numbers have changed, right? But I don't have to insert or change any of the numbers because those will get updated upstream because again, this manuscript is gonna be dependent on those upstream files. And so that reminds me that I need to enforce that. And I can enforce that, of course, by taking uh, these two uh, file names and making them dependencies of my manuscript. And so if I open up Atom for my project and I come to my make file where I am making my manuscript down here, I can add those dependencies, right? So if either of these files gets updated, then it will rebuild the manuscript, which is pretty slick, okay? So again, uh, I'm just gonna do the PDF for now. Uh, of course, when we build the PDF, um, it also builds the docx file. All right, so I hope this was exciting to you or interesting to you about how we can use R markdown to insert code into our text to then bring in those specific values. Any value you can generate in R. We've already seen names, um, characters, and numbers. Uh, you could insert P values, anything um, you can insert into the text using R. And so that's why this is so valuable for reproducible research. It's again, you can find that number in the manuscript, you can go to the R markdown document, you can go back to those TSV files, and you can keep going all the way back to the original source of the raw data. It's very transparent and very empowering. All right, so in the next episode, we'll take on that second paragraph and maybe learn some new things. Till then, keep practicing. Please tell your friends about Code Club. If this stuff interests you and in how to use R, but perhaps some of the R syntax is a bit foreign, please be sure to check out rifamonis.org. I've got two full-length 10, 12-part tutorials on learning R using microbiome data, as well as another tutorial using other types of data. Please check it out. Let me know what you think. Um, and again, we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.